I'm Dee Brockwell. Welcome to this edition of Burlington Now. In today's episode, we're going to speak with one of the city's leaders and find out some exciting news about one of the oldest historical landmarks in the city. Then Officer Shante Harris-Stewart will take us behind the scenes and we get a glimpse at what it takes to be a canine handler. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. The city of Burlington's ability throughout history to be resourceful and innovative has allowed it to both survive and thrive very successfully under the usual challenges most cities face. We'll learn more about how that's going on even today with the Economic and the Development Director for the City of Burlington, Peter Bishop. Peter, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Dee. Thanks for coming. I understand that currently you are in a very active role as lead project lead and a master plan for the redevelopment of one of the city's historic landmarks. Yes, we're sitting today on the Western Electric plant site. Um, this facility has a long history in Burlington's industry and economy. It started first as a rayon plant and then um, manufactured training aircraft for the U.S. Army during World War II. After that, it became a defense agency site where the Western Electric Company um, designed and built missile systems for the U.S. military. Um, and it has been vacant probably about 25 years since then, so uh, a very rich history of this plant and this uh, facility here in the city over many generations uh, really helped build out the middle class in Burlington and helped build out this uh, eastern side of our city. Absolutely. Well, I understand the redevelopment is going to take some money and the City of Burlington has been awarded a very special grant. Can you tell us more about that? I can. So one of the things that Economic Development does uh, and that City Council has directed Economic Development to do in the city is identify strategic industrial sites or legacy sites that have been important for the city for years but maybe need a little bit of refurbishment or possibly uh, repositioning within the market. Um, so strategically the city's looked throughout and, and identified some of these different facilities and certainly Western Electric is the, is the largest and most obvious of these. It's about 23 acres and 750,000 square feet on this site behind us, so it's significant. And with a significant project comes the need for some significant resources and assistance. So the city, as we do strategically, we're always looking for funds and partners to help us redevelop properties and reposition them. We're partnering with the American Institute of Architects, or the AIA, through their Sustainable Design Assessment Team grant uh, to do a master plan and community visioning project for this property. And our intent in doing that is to really position the Western Electric property as the catalyst and center of redevelopment of new energy and excitement within this Eastern Burlington community. That's very exciting news. Uh, a lot of plans going on the table. Now, you're certainly not working alone. You have a team of people that are working with you. Tell us more about that, how that's happening. So through this grant, the AIA assigns a Sustainable Design Assessment Team, or SDAT team, and that's led by an AIA professional. His name's Tom Liebel, and he uh, focuses, he's based out of ba uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and he's a national expert on LEED certification on historic renovation and rehabilitation. And, one great thing about this property behind us is that it's on the National Register of Historic Places, so it's eligible to receive grants, and it's uh, got some very um, important structures that were uh, designed by Walter Kahn, a very well-known architect in the, in the military uh, bases and industrial military uh, phase of the 1950s and 60s. Um, so we have very significant buildings here. That team and that team leader, Mr. Liebel, um, is going to put together six to seven additional AIAs with specific focuses in historic preservation, in community connectedness and transportation, in recreation, in market rate housing, um, in redeveloping properties. So the idea of the SDAT team is to bring the best resources that are objective, that don't have you know, skin in the game necessarily, that are looking for the best outcomes for the community, for the city, for the private property owner as well. Absolutely. Oh, well, I know you also have, are working with some of our city leaders too, to yes. address the needs of the city in that. That's correct. Part of the uh, SDAT grant required the city to assemble a steering committee um, that includes our mayor, uh, superintendent of schools office, uh, the, the county manager. There's a lot of county uh, offices that surround this facility um, and several other community members within this neighborhood. So we have folks that live on the streets adjacent to this property that are helping plan and do a lot of the community outreach for the project. The best project that comes from the strongest 
is community engagement and, and outreach. And we're doing a few things with this project. When the full team, that team of architects, descends upon Burlington to do some design work and intensive work, we're actually going to host an open house on this site, invite people from the city to come see all the different things that this site has been for over many years. A lot of people, as I mentioned before, have a connection, a direct historical connection to this facility. Their grandparents, their parents worked here. And there were a lot of clandestine and DOD operations that happened here that not a lot of people could talk about. So this may be the first time a lot of residents um, and family members of folks that have worked and lived in Burlington have been on, on this site. So um, we're really stressing that community engagement and to get some ideas and to get some excitement around this property. All of that will take place and we'll collect all that uh, information. Uh, the ESTATs will work with contractors, engineers, um, real estate professionals to try and identify the best path forward for this plan for the city, the neighborhood, and the ownership. That sounds extremely exciting. I know it's been here, sitting here for a while, and I know the residents of Burlington are very excited to see what's going to be coming up next. Can they follow some of the progress? Is there a way for them to kind of stay in tune after, after they view this segment? They certainly can. Uh, so the city has our website, uh, burlingtonnc.gov. We have a page dedicated to the Western Electric Project there. Of course, the city operates a, a, a Twitter handle, um, burlingtonnc. Uh, or at Burlington NC, there's at Think Burlington, which is my Twitter handle for economic development, and we are also on Facebook and, and, and other media. Uh, we'll probably have some news stories and some other special interest articles as we move along in this process. This has been successful throughout the country? That's correct, yes. Uh, they've been doing SDATs for over 50 years with the AIA. It's their give back project of the year, so this is all pro bono work done by these folks coming in. They're all very passionate about this uh, project and this property. As are our steering co uh, committee members, I will put in another plug for our SDAT team visit on September the 19th. Uh, we'll have a meeting and an open house of this facility, so would really encourage um, city uh, residents to come out and take a look, be involved, to be a part of our regrowth and rebirth of this property. Absolutely. Everyone's going to look forward to that, me included. <laughs> thank you for joining us today, Peter. Yes, thank you, Dee. A lot of people don't know how important the K-9 unit is to the local police department. But today you're going to hear from some K-9 units and some people who deal with K-9s on a daily basis. Come on, find it. Find it, show me. Good boy. So I'm standing here with K-9 handler Justin Jolly. Justin, what do you have to go through to become a handler? Uh, to become a handler, I had to submit a uh, letter to my supervisor, my first line supervisor. Um, we had a process that we went through, um, which included an oral board. It also included a physical fitness, um, where we had to demonstrate that we could run a mile uh, within a certain amount of time. We had to do it within 10 minutes. Um, we also had to hold a dog back while the dog was agitated by a decoy and a bite suit. So every year we do a minimum of 192 hours of training. And the way we get those hours in is we train five hours once a week, every Monday. Uh, all five of the K-9 handlers will get together and we'll train together as a unit. We're also joined uh, twice a month by the Mebane Police Department. They have two K-9 handlers that come out and train with us. Twice a year we certify through the United States Police K-9 Association. That's to show proficiency in drug detection, obedience, agility, and article searches. We currently have five K-9 handlers that work for the Burlington Police Department. We have four patrol dogs that are what we call dual purpose dogs. Who's like, good boy! Which means they're certified in both drug detection and uh, tracking. We have one handler that works for the Vice Narcotics Unit. His dog is what we call a single purpose dog, and he's a drug detection dog only. Good boy! Good boy! So this is, uh, this is heroin, a little bit of heroin. He had no training whatsoever. He, he was from the pound, so I uh, got him in January. We certified in the middle of March, so it took us you know, roughly close to three months to getting certified. So not too long. Uh, it's just taking like persistence and training pretty much every day until he gets it, gets the odors. I never aspired to be a canine officer, but uh, I'm not regretting my decision to be his. He's a good dog. So I'm standing here with Lieutenant Chris Smith. Lieutenant, how important is the canine unit to the Burlington Police Department? It's very important. The canine unit is. Uh, it's, it's, it's an extra tool in our tool belt and for uh, helping solve crimes. So he's licking the handle right there. Find it. This is, uh, this is cocaine. Co cocaine in the glove box. Good boy. When dealing with an a incident that happens, if a suspect was in the location and got away, what would your dog be able to do as far as that? 
So I get there on scene, I'm gonna place my dog in a tracking harness, um, hook him up to a 15 foot lead. It's imperative that the officer that arrives on scene gets a good starting point for the last place that the witness or the victim saw the suspect. Once he notifies me the last place the suspect was seen, then I'll cast my dog in that area and when he picks up on the scent, he's gonna be tracking. Anytime that somebody's running from a scene, they're stepping on grass, they're kicking up rocks, they're moving dirt, and when they're doing this, they're causing ground disturbance. When that happens, an odor is released from the ground. Um, their sense of smell is strong enough to where they can pick up on that odor. Also, when you're running or you're walking, you're having dead skin cells and um, clothing particles that are falling off your body. And they also use that to um, scent discriminate and make sure they're not starting to track someone else. Um, their sense of smell has been explained to me that if me and you walk into a room um, and your mom's cooking vegetable soup, we smell exactly that vegetable soup. But when uh, the dog walks in the room, they smell everything individually. They smell the potatoes, they smell the tomatoes, they smell the green beans, the carrots, they smell all that individually. And that just kind of shows how strong that sense of smell is to pick up on the odor that's being released from the ground, as well as the uh, dead skin cells that are falling off your body. What other activities do I do as far as canine that's outside of patrol? Uh, some of these, uh, these guys are responsible for, they're also responsible for doing public demonstrations. Uh, and they do them weekly. They do them in school settings. They actually do them at the police department. They do them for the Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts. We get many requests from different public organizations uh, and it's a, it's a good tool for us to reach out in a good conversation piece to the community. So what do you take away from the, being the lieutenant of a canine? Uh, well, it gives me a, 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 the ability to be involved in the dogs. I've always loved dogs. I was a handler myself about 17 years ago and that was probably one of the best jobs I had an opportunity to do and now that I get an opportunity to, to continue to be involved with the dogs and have some say so in things that and maybe in a different direction that uh, we could do better that we didn't have an opportunity to do when I was a handler. So I hope you enjoyed this segment about canine units and now you have an inside look at how essential and important canines are to the Burlington Police Department. Have a good day. Be safe out there. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Burlington Now. Until next time, keep up to date with everything going on in the city online at BurlingtonNC.gov or Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at BurlingtonNC.